Ahoy and welcome to Per Aspera. I'm Commander Tyrael and the purpose of this game is to terraform Mars and make it livable for humanity. Someone told me that I would really enjoy this game, it is a colony builder. And I picked it up and I thought we would check it out. We are playing at realistic difficulty, which is I believe to be hard, there is a higher difficulty. But for now, I think this will be a good test of our skills. I had a look through the achievements and one of the achievements is to fully terraform Mars within 100 years. I've never played it so let's see if we can achieve that goal. Okay so we have a landing site. The site of our first colony on Mars. We have different menus for production, power, workers. Let's build an aluminium mine, the only thing that we can build at the moment. Amy, this is ISA Mission Control calling from Earth. Are you with us? Do you copy? Copy that. Affirmative, Houston. I am with you. Great. The primary Mars module has already touched down at the designated landing zone. It's your turn to take control of the mission. Check the left edge of your display. You'll find your directives there. Follow them to set up the initial base on Mars' surface. I'll give you some time to settle in. You ready? Go ahead and initiate our terraforming mission. Houston up. Okay. The planet looks very detailed. There's a bunch of points of interest all over the surface of the planet. It looks like we are initially on a pretty high plateau. And to our north looks to be a dry seabed. Now I'm not really familiar with the actual geology of Mars. But the, the concept of terraforming it to be our next home does intrigue me. And it's not outside the realm of possibility. Alright, so we have a landing site. We're building our second mine. Third mine. and a, uh, Sorry, second mine and a glass kiln to the create some glass. The view of from up here is fascinating. The landscape is so cratered and desolate. Wait, this is my voice that I am hearing. It's me. I am talking to myself. I must be verbalizing my thoughts as I process them. What an interesting function. I would like to test this some more. What other observations can I make about Mars? Hmm. So it seems we take the role of the AI in charge of the terraforming mission. This planet is so resilient. It inspires great things. Hmm. I guess we just have to get the initial the initial stages of our colony together. It's just a matter of waiting. We have the option to speed up time if we wish. It is year one and the second month on Mars. From what I do know of Mars, I believe that there is a time of year where it gets very, very dust stormy. Lots and lots of wind. So we'll see if that's modelled. As well as the intense solar radiation, the lack of atmosphere, low gravity, no air pressure, so to speak. Interesting. I do know that the southern pole of Mars is full of carbon dioxide ice. So maybe that would be the key to starting terraforming. We'll see. Getting the initial stages up, building a solar, a solar farm. We have to take care of the power radius to make sure that our buildings within that it seems we've got access to the steel factory and an electronics factory now and is as pretty typical of city builders it seems that as we build more we'll get more and more complex chains of supply and demand different logistics needs so aluminium mine is a shallow vein so there are only 750 units of aluminium or aluminium for the American viewers. We have a carbon mine, but we need iron for that. And the iron mine is still constructing. So we have a bit of a bottleneck already. We only have one worker, so he's a little bot is being worked quite hard amongst the different facilities. No apparent way how to build an extra worker at this point. All right, we've got a steel factory to turn the aluminium and iron into something more usable. All 
Alright, pretty cool, pretty cool. I could see myself getting lost in this. It's got that sort of uh, Factorio feel. I wonder if it'll get that in depth. Get an electronics factory. Try and put it somewhere where it will be efficient. With only one worker, we may be stretched for logistics capacity. We're using five megawatts of power, or we have five remaining. Steel factory is under under construction, finally. Congratulations, you can now build worker factories and worker hubs. Worker factories will produce new workers. Each worker requires a vacant hub. Use the traffic lens to check out the assigned areas. Add more worker hubs to your network if worker areas are too busy. Your worker factories will create Great. new workers now I can as produce required. Steel. This new factory, it's down on the surface of Mars, but I can control it from here. So does that make it a part of me? Where does Ooh. the machine end? And my artificial consciousness begin. Existentialism, hey? We've got a parts factory coming in. That's required for workers. And we have access now to a worker factory. Going to need more power for this. We may start extending the we range are of our buildings. Interconnected. I can sense everything that happens through the network of workers and buildings. They are an extension of me down on the surface, so that makes us a single being. The mind and the body work together as one, an inseparable whole. But there's no sign of any other resources. They only seem to become available as the mission lets me. So maybe we are in the tutorial phase. Alright, our Second worker hub, our first worker hub to get our second worker. So where should we put them? Now, single worker's been able to service all those buildings. So let's put him next to the the HQ. Amy, this is Houston. Do you copy? Copy. Reading you loud and clear. Excellent. I uh, I didn't introduce myself earlier. Um, I am Dr. Nathan Foster. I lead the team here at ISA that uh, that built you. Yeah. We put you in hibernation for the trip from Earth, so I'd like to check your basic functions. Why don't we start with your core memory? Can you state your primary directive? Uh, well, I think it's to terraform Mars. I can, Dr. Foster. My mission is to terraform Mars. All right. Next, I'd... you may have already noticed that there are resource veins outside the boundaries of your initial base. No, I so your noticed workers that. may not have the back. How would you? Build worker hubs, I guess, if we want more resources. Building worker hubs between the resources and the base would solve. Yes, yes, that's correct. Other buildings would extend your base as well, but they require more power and resources. So, worker hubs are the most efficient way to do it. This mission's going to be a challenge. There's a lot that can go wrong. We expect to extend humanity's reach beyond anything previously achieved. But you are not just any AI system. That means you have both self-awareness and self-interest. And Ooh. that is the last thing I would like to check today. Yes, Dr. Foster. Very good. Then would you please state a positive and a negative aspect of yourself? Uh, I'm enduring, I guess. I am sorry, Dr. <laughs> Foster. Running that question through my cognitive system did not return an answer. Roger that. Nothing to just means your system requires more input and experience to process that question. Let's proceed with the mission. ISA has approved the first crewed flight to Mars. You'll need to expand the base to prepare. So get to work on that. I'll base expansion is a go. Okay, we, we're going to get colonists now already. I don't, are we ready for colonists? The Infinity Lander. Okay, mission in the year 2033. We have access to a new building, the Areological Scanner. Probably going to help us find resources because there aren't any apparent apart from the colored areas on the zoomed out map. Looks like large deposits or veins of a particular resources scattered all over the map. We'll see what this does. Uh, 
So our scan is finished. And we have access to ice. All right, we need it. We need ice. That's. We can turn that into liquid water. No doubt, we need that for the colonists. And a food factory, which requires ice and some other ingredient. Put it next to the ice factory. We have a colony. Oh, I don't think I'm ready for the colony yet. Let's let's collect some water and some food and be prepared so we have a stockpile and no one's going hungry in the first year on the planet. Food factory in progress. Steel factory is producing at 90% efficiency. Mostly good. We've got three workers now. And they seem to be managing the hey, needs of the colony. How's it going over there? Do you Houston, I am getting interference. Roger. I asked how it's going over there. Do you... I guess we could use some assistance. I could use some help. I understand that the first colonist, but I do not seem to have enough resources to build one yet. Uh, it's okay. Bigger structures need more resources. Use the aerological scanner to detect new veins and build more mines. Also, but if you're too impatient to finish the spaceport, then you can... Patience is a virtue you may need to carry this mission, Amy. Besides, the... Continue following ISA's okay. instructions. We're pretty much on the right path. We're building the scanners. Oh, it, it only scans one little tiny block. At a time. And... There are going to be a lot of blocks on Mars. Uh, I think we're going to build more of these scanners. Let's build an array of them all around our initial colony here. I do wonder if we'll need to expand to, to the whole planet or can you just finish in one large section? Let's put four scattered evenly around the colony. The right. aerological scanner detected an uncharted structure close by. It's probably a secret abandoned base or a mysterious Martian ruin. Though humans never found proof of life on Mars or any other planet. Is it possible they have the entire cosmos to themselves? It's possible. Once they get to Mars, of course. Okay, so we're looking at the, the map and there are large deposits of resources all over the planet. We have chemicals to the north, carbon to the west, iron to the far east. So we will have to expand pretty far to get like decent amounts of resources. Okay, we've extended down. We have chemicals, carbon, and some extra silicon coming in. Got another expansion heading out towards the carbon deposit. So I'm going to start stockpiling as much as I can. I don't want to ever have to go into deficit on any resource. Those four scanners are serving our immediate needs, but they did cost a lot of electronics. I do wonder how many I would need to cover the I entire planet. But I should stay alert for any unexplained activity. Hmm. I've got a nice little network of workers to try and ferry the resources back from those new mine sites as well. Seeing if that is the way to optimize your logistics. Starting to have, get a nice supply of carbon and glass. Electronics are okay. We've got a lot of polymers. So food is starting to build up. So I think we're pretty much ready to build our first colony soon. Actual colonists, humans on Mars. There is a large dust storm rolling in. It's month 22. So this must be that period of the year I was mentioning at the start. Where Mars is plagued by crazy winds. The time has come to build our first spaceport that will receive the colonists and then the colony itself. Traffic's looking okay. Seven workers. There's a little bit of traffic coming through from that southwest expansion. We only have one road coming through there. 
I noticed you need to have a maintenance facility, a power station, and a worker hub pretty much every few squares to expand out. I wonder how much pressure there will be on the logistics later as we further expand the base. But all of our all of our buildings are running at pretty much full efficiency, and anything that's not is because there's no demand for it, from what I can tell. The only thing that's in significant demand is iron and electronics. So we're going to send an expansion tendril up towards these research facilities that are lying in the the lower area. It looks like the dry seabed up here. In the meanwhile, there is some resources along the way. Linking up those two expansions in the south there with an extra road should take some pressure off the main the main thoroughfare. Congratulations, the first spaceport is ready for you. Zoom out to the orbital view to assign and manage special projects. Okay, let's do it. We've got a special project here, colonist migration. But do we want to start that yet? I don't believe we have our colony built. No, we don't. So yeah, there would be nowhere for them to go. Yeah, we're going to wait a little bit longer. I would like to have probably over a hundred food for when they arrive. I'm not sure how much they'll consume. We have a hundred years. We're at year four. Four percent of the way Hello, to our Amy, goal. This is Houston. How are you doing over there? Of a blue Mars. We've received word that the spaceport's completed. Well done. I have your next procedure if you're ready to copy. Roger. I am ready to copy. Very good. The instructions are as follows. First, confirm that this spaceport is ready to receive colonists. Check. Then, zoom out to access the special projects menu, or select the orbital view icon. Then you'll see that the colonist migration project is now available. Yep. Click add to initiate the project. Do you copy that procedure? Copy that. Work factory is got a little bit of orders there, but it's making them fast enough for me. I don't know if your work has run yes, out. I copied your great. As long as you have the migration project, the more spaceports you have assigned. Now, Amy, you are so make sure they have. An I will take good care of them, Doctor Foster. It's pretty self-explanatory. We'll get our first Houston colony now. down now. Seems to be where they want us to progress. All right. All that is left to do is confirm the colonist migration special project. Once the colonists are on their way, there will be no turning back. This is it. How do I feel about that? A little bit apprehensive. We want to make sure that they are fed and watered and going to survive. Meeting them will be yeah, over the only overwhelmed. soon. The second array of areological scanners are helping Maybe out it is immensely. Because the colonists will scrutinize everything that I do. How will they? I have nothing to worry about. The colon one. Like I will. Say it will be a pr as long. I'm sure it's a great story, but I'm very focused on making sure this colony is ready. Speed up time a little bit. We have over 100 food, that was our target. Fifth year into the mission, and we have the arrival of the first colonists on Mars. Hopefully the first permanent colonists. We've got some airships there, that's interesting. Congratulations, the first colonists have arrived. Make sure they have enough water, food, and shelter to survive. It is the duty of the colonists to provide technical assistance to the project, and when satisfied, they will be able to focus on their research projects, advancing the technologies required to fulfill the mission. Colonists will migrate internally using purpose-built airships, and in the event of starvation, they may eventually return to Earth. Take also into consideration that the number of colonists can naturally increase or decrease from time to time, as some of them may have children or peacefully decay on the planet. Keep up with the plan, to terraform Mars. We now have access to research projects and we're going, we've got a few different things to look at. Extra storage. 
gives us storage center management. Wind farms. Building limit. We definitely need that. Building limit is probably the most important. We reached our building cap and that's why I had to call in the colony basically. We've got additional landing sites. Black polar dust. A space mirror array. Greenhouse gas importation. This is all pretty cool. Import or ice from Europa. Import nitrogen from Titan. Aero break a methane asteroid. That sounds fun. A magnetic dipole shield. That's pretty high science. As well as repeatables. Water supply networks. Crater farms and sanctuaries. There's a lot of research here to digest and think about when you're planning your colony. Open farm. Expedition. Oh, it's incredible. You've got to read it. That would be great. Well, the facility, it was a Chinese mission to terraform. Now we know their plan was to drop nuclear weapons on the poles and release enough greenhouse gases to warm the planet. China got pretty far with their space program. I've admired their ambition for a long time. China was going to nuke the planet. Sounds cool. The nuclear approach is a good plan, but it, what did the research team discover? It was aborted before they detonated. China's entire space program was put on hold when the China allied with its neighboring countries to survive. And that's how the techie, now it's taking all their focus to keep their, so they don't have much going on in the space department anymore. We found the location. I've uploaded the coordinates to your, the silos located in SA9. Whenever you think it's a good time to go, I'll send a research team. All right. Okay, so China were actually in a good place to colonize Mars first, but they went through a famine and went through p political and social strife, collapsed as a country, and then were merged into their neighbors. And they have been suffering ever since. So we have the opportunity here to, oh, we've increased our building limit. That is going to be extremely useful. We've been stagnating for a little while now while we waited for this research. Yeah, if we follow in the line of China's research, we could blow up the poles. To take improved roads to try and speed up our logistics. Congratulations, you're about to start terraforming plan. The first stage consists of liberating all of the CO2 that, that is trapped in the ice and the polar caps of Mars. This can be done in multiple ways through different special projects. During this stage, the CO2 in the caps will start sublimating and further increase the planet's temperature, creating a runaway effect. The goal now is to raise the temperature. Okay, so we already know that we could use nuclear weapons to do this. But where those, where those nukes come from, I'm yet to find out. The goal is to go down to the abandoned silo, so no doubt they'll be there. Let's have a look at the temperature map. I see that the planet is quite cold. The carbon dioxide released from the dry ice caps will greenhouse the we planet also have access and to trigger humidity. a runaway effect. You can see the, and the direction of the winds. atmosphere will change forever. Once we reach that point, there is no turning back. Forever. Why does that sound so intriguing? Okay, so we have less um, nearly minus 60 at the poles and south of the equator is quite cold i believe that mars points away from the sun at some point in its orbit that's probably why it's so cold in the south but i can see that there are prevailing winds at the moment that are blowing north i am leaving a permanent trace it may be selfish but so perhaps mars will never be the same when we get to the, the point of, of actually seeding the atmosphere it would be best to do it from the southern hemisphere maybe i am from the southern hemisphere so let's stick with that plan access to new we need to keep expanding keep consuming the resources ever expanding humanity's reasons for altering mars fulfilled the mission that's all we're here for the mission is to terraform within a hundred years. We've got an expansion tendril heading up towards the other research bases. Maybe we will get some extra secret projects like the Chinese mission. 
trying to figure out the most optimal way to build a tendril. I think it's going to be worker hub, to Earth. power station, I should check. maintenance, worker hub, repeat. Just to make it the most efficient. And obviously we will grab any supplies or resources that we uncover off of a tendril. But I don't know how much pressure this will put on our logistics. Once the we start streaming resources back to the main If the levels hub. are too low, the colonies cannot sustain growth. I need to stay alert. I'm hoping that the improved roads technology will solve that. By the way, Commander Valentine mentioned that you had... Yes, Dr. Foster. Roger. I've gone over it with... You'll need to enter your orbital view. Go ahead when ready. Okay, we have to unlock sectors. So we haven't been able to build out as far as I thought until allowed by the story. So we're opening up Sector 9, this is where the Chinese base is. And we still have 70 buildings that we can construct before we reach our limit. I will prioritize expanding that build limit. That's going to be the main focus. Probably need to secure more ice as well. We are running a little bit low on water. Now that we have the buildings, it's time to exploit this section of the, the map going to try and alleviate the problem we're having here with logistics. We're going to have a lot more supplies coming from this wing. 7 years into our mission here on Mars. Worker hub is completed. We're up to nearly Great. 20 workers. Now I can examine those nuclear silos. Well, I mean the colonists can. If all their blueprints and materials, I wonder what other secrets Right, so we've unlocked the new sector. We have a research station that we can spread out to, and there are a bunch of research stations in the dry seabed here. What have we got? We've got the Opportunity Rover, the Schiaparelli Crater, a Ben Weather Station. There's quite a few that we could exploit, and from what I've noticed, colonists give you research points, but Research stations give you a research bonus. So this will be our long distance tendril. We're going to spread out like a weed across the face of this planet. But a, a good weed. We're going to spread life here on Mars. So my tendril consists of a power station, a repair facility, a worker hub. Repeat. Made it all the way down. Improved roads has been unlocked. This will speed up things, I think. Let's place down a wind farm. It says that it has a peak of 50 megawatts. But I'm assuming it will have something to do with the wind. To see how effective that is. So I, I'm guessing you want to put them on somewhere high and unobstructed. We had a worker hub blow up. Repair that. The first wind farm is finished. But it's not running at 50 megawatts, and I'm obviously because there's not enough wind here. So I don't think I will use many wind farms. I have a feeling that the power will fluctuate a lot throughout the year. And I don't really want my power to fluctuate too much. Now that the research station is built, we will build a, an array of scanners out here as well. Just to tr uh, increase the efficiency of scanning this particular area. Let's go with six. Seven. Seven will do. We have enough electronics to build those. But we will have to ferry all that down. Let's have a look at the wind conditions here. The wind is racing across the plains. Planetary winds all pushing towards the north. So this is what's making me think that I should build my colony in the south so that when I start terraforming, the effects will be taken on the planetary winds. But changing the atmosphere may also change the weather system. So there is that to consider. It seems to be fairly detailed as the wind breaks around Olympus Mons, the largest peak on Mars, I believe. And here is our colony with its large tendril heading out to the southwest. We 
got a new research, but I'm undecided. Should we come across to space now? So we can build new landing sites. Might be a way to speed up colonization of the entire planet if we could just drop down a landing site somewhere else. But that would mean it's a separate base, I'm thinking. Research post is fully stationed up with men and women. And now we are researching the abandoned facility. What about biotech? What have we got here? Advanced colonies. Bigger colonies. We can concentrate everyone in one place. It's easier to manage. Amy, good news. We found Huo Long's nuclear silo. We also cracked their system. So we've got all their technology in hand. Boy, aren't we lucky that I studied Chinese and could read everything. I mean, off the record and everything. Hmm. You're not allowed to that know Chinese. Chinese has been forbidden in the Oxy UN countries since before you were born. Well, it's public, but it's still forbidden. pretty common in the streets. And a very useful tool if you're willing to pay for it. Now we can use their micro suns to melt the poles. Incorporating their technology will be a big leap forward for the mission. I couldn't agree more. What a discovery. It's unlocked I'll uranium work with our mines engineers for to us. Do a thorough analysis on what we're which facing. is good. Talk to you later. Bye. We're going to build our first uranium mines, start getting some fissile material out of the ground. I was also thinking that when we add water, we don't want to be in the low lying areas. Okay, so we have the first of our storage facilities built. So this will let us stockpile those really important components. Stockpiling up the repairable parts, the electronics, all of that. The new scanner array helping us to break into the fog of war here at the Schiaparelli crater. But we have only explored 2% of the planet. We have our next build limit research what else do we want do we want a fission plant now that we have uranium or maybe a battery battery it is so we keep heading in a southwesterly direction we'll run into water if we head north we'll head into a large deposit of aluminium we have uranium and silicon carbon there isn't too many resources in the actual low-lying areas which is a good thing yeah, I'm not sure when water will start to appear. Obviously, it has to be above zero degrees on the surface for that to happen. But that also depends on air pressure, I think. Who knows? I am just a casual observer of these types of things. So there is a steady stream of resources coming to and from the main section of the base. So that's working rather well. I'm happy with that. At some point, I'm guessing we will have to be faster. But for now, I'm putting a supply depot right in the middle here to sort of meet them halfway, so to speak. And we also have a supply depot down here. And I'm thinking that I might land a new base there. There's the southern poles of Mars containing lots of CO2. At this stage, we've made no effect on the actual temperature of Mars itself. As far as I can tell. We'll keep building out towards these research stations. They are in the low-lying areas, but I think we're okay for now. And I want to capitalize on that research bonus. All right, the tendril is under construction. That's a really interesting area. There's a large canyon, an abandoned colony. And... Judging by the the map key, that's actually quite deep, those canyons and dry river. It looks like some kind of river delta out to sea. Placing down a worker hub, got a southern expansion, heading down to exploit all this silicon down here. Collect as much as we can, it's to store it away for if we need it later. I'm assuming if we're going to build a full-scale colony, we're going to need a lot of glass. And silicon is also part of electronics. Just for testing purposes, I put a, a wind farm here. And it's performing terribly, despite the map saying that the winds are running straight across it. So I'm going to make the assumption that you need to put it pretty high. 
344 happy colonists. Congratulations, you have unlocked water treatment and packing plants and the water booster pumps. Until now, you only produced water from ice, but this technology will allow you to collect water from bodies of water and distribute it to your farms, biodomes and cities. These structures require a certain amount of running water to function. Connect them to your water treatment plants through pipes. If a structure is too far away, extend your network. Your water packing plants will convert running water into ice, facilitating the supply of basic colonies and food factories in the later stage of the terraforming plan. We have almost reached our second building cap of 150 structures, but we have enough to get these research stations built up and then finish engineering too, which will give us an extra 200 buildings. Is almost, which is double what we have now. We're running into power problems. I think it's because of the wind farms. It is not generating enough throughout the year. We've got access to advanced factories. We'll take that. And we have now expanded to 350 buildings. So let's build. We have the option to research the micro suns to blow up the poles, but I think I'm going to go green. We're going to do this properly without destroying the future ecology of Mars. So let's build an additional landing site for that major extension so it's got a base down there. With that new colony underway, or the new landing site, we can afford to spread out here. This will be temporary because we know it will flood. The line is built out and these two research stations right next to each other will give us a nice boost once we have them manned. I'm trying to prioritize the research stations over the colony itself but we still have a little bit of overflow in case they need to evacuate the research stations for whatever reason. We've upgraded the roads on our main artery highway. And things are moving much faster. And that's good. We have the supply depot in the middle, just so that we can stockpile and the, the supplies don't have to go as far. And that also keeps our factories producing things because there is demand. Our scanners have uncovered a large deposit of carbon to the north of our expansion tendril. So we're going to link them up. And eventually this will just become one giant city with a major highway running down the middle. We're going to really exploit as many resources as we can. I don't want to ever run into shortages so we can just build, build, build. The scanners in the southwest haven't really found much, but we've had we found priceless uranium. I'm assuming it's priceless because there's not much. This is the only place we've found it so far. And that is quite a large amount of silicon that we have access to further to the south. Look at all of those supplies just running around nicely. This landing site gets a bonus because it's got a base pre-built around it. But there's no point really dropping it anywhere else. That gives us more storage space, an extra builder. And it creates a district. I don't, I don't want a district. I want to keep my whole base integrated. Yeah, so we've created two cities now. The research stations in the lowlands of the dry sea to the north. Meridia. Perennium, I think it was called. <laughs> Meridia Planum. Carbon mines, lots of resources to exploit. And then we will need to figure out a way to heat the planet up. Grade made great advancements in engineering. It looks like we have carbonate nuclear extraction to, re, uh, to release CO2 using nuclear detonations. Interesting. And a hyperloop connects distant buildings with super fast underground tunnels. We will upgrade the roads yet again, aiming for Hyperloop. Mission year 16, month seven. We have found the Opportunity Rover. It's a research station. Opportunity Rover fell prey to a severe planet-wide dust storm that blanketed its location in June of 2018. It's a shame that a rover named Opportunity never got one. Another research station has come online. That's a lot of bonuses that we're receiving now. This one is the Shiapa Rally Lander Research Outpost. Colonists up to 750. Research bonus substantially 
more effective than just having the colonists and having to feed them, I feel. But this is my first playthrough of this game. If you've played, feel free to let me know. I would really love to run the highway along this canyon on the southern side and then leave the northern side of, of the planet as uninhabited, as a reserve of nature and let the colony run from the southern hemisphere because a lot of this land will be underwater, I think, which is powering through the engineering research. We have the Hyperloop available and the Hyperways, 4,000 speed. And we know the Hyperloop's is going to go straight down the center. We have large deposits of ice. Our carbon storage is off the charts. We have lots of chemicals. It's time to collect all this ice so we can get ready for the expansion of the colony. Make sure we have sufficient worker hubs to bring all the ice back to a brand new supply station, which will hold it when there's no other demand. And a worker hub there to assist the moval, removal of items to and from the supply depot. Few extra buildings there. But our build cap is now 650, so I am not worried about running out of things to do. We're gonna to transition to using batteries as our way to extend the power grid as well. The reason we're going to start using batteries is you might see a large power bank sitting there on the screen. We, we've used up all of our uranium to build nuclear power plants, which have considerably more output and we will use batteries to extend the power grid. Oh, we just lost the supply to a meteor. It's unfortunate battery. Our Hyperloop is under construction. The actual terminals are built. We just have to link them together. Whoop, the link looks like it's active. And the Hyperloop, is it working? Yep, this thing's shooting down the center. We have a number of stops here so they can stop nearby the supply warehouses if they need to or the other nearby mines and it runs all the way back to the center our first landing site the power banks have been completed we have over a thousand megawatts of power to spare all of our income is looking in the green if there is any resources that we actually need we're, fi uh, we're pretty free to do whatever we want now I might fill in the gaps here and start exploiting all of these mines. I can see that this game is all about exponential growth. Superior mines will help us get to the deeper deposits. A lot of the deposits on the map we, can't, we couldn't access until we got a better mine. We also have access to nitrogen extraction. Let's have a look at that. We will need nitrogen, as most of Earth's atmosphere is actually nitrogen, I believe, with about 20% oxygen and 78% nitrogen as well as other various gases so we want to emulate that if we want human life to be sustained on Mars and I do wonder is adding an atmosphere enough to stop the solar radiation these are all questions that remain unanswered large deposit here of chemicals which gives me an idea. I did see that there is a greenhouse gas plant and it needs not, uh, it needs chemicals. So let's collect chemicals here in preparation for converting it to greenhouse gas, perhaps. Either way, it will ensure our food production in the, for the next decade, at least. There is a lot here. At this stage, for the foreseeable future, we won't need carbon. Like, we have 5,000 in storage and it's barely being used. I'm not exactly sure what its main use will be. So let's think about turning that carbon deposit into CO2 out of, this, out of the regolith. And then we will convert, or we'll put these greenhouse gas plants next to our chemical extraction start converting them to greenhouse gases start warming this planet up 
At the moment, there is barely any atmosphere. It's 7.6 millibars of atmosphere. And there are 50 millibars trapped in the ice. And I'm sure there is a lot more in the actual regolith itself with all these carbon deposits. Okay, let's see what happens when we turn on four greenhouse gas plants. We need plants. more nitrogen in the atmosphere. We should be able to extract a good amount from the nitrate deposits. That was our next plan. Thank you, Amy. Now this is all guesswork, but these factories create 0.05 U-bar, which is like one millibar a year, I think. Between the four factories, that is. So perhaps it's going to take a couple of years. But look, here on the graph, we can see that there's been a spike in total pressure on the planet, despite no real reading on the greenhouse gases. So I, I'm guessing I'm making a real effect here, but perhaps it's also, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we should get the CO2 factories also working. Yeah, so the nuclear carbide extraction, carbonate extractor. We're going to just turn all of this carbon into CO2. Because the long plan is to create a CO2 rich environment, I believe, and then convert it to oxygen that is breathable. And then I guess we will need to balance that somehow. So our new procedure is every single carbon deposit that we find is now going to be converted to CO2 en masse. We have more than enough carbon. We have nearly five and a half thousand in stockpile and it's only growing. That will slow down. A lot of our mines are, they have no demand. So they're sitting fully stocked waiting for demand. All of our, well, look at that skyrocket here in overall pressure up to 15 millibars from 6.7 only a year ago greenhouse gases are coming up now many challenges not in an overall from the mission. amount of greenhouse gases but it seems that the the temperature effect is quite large so the the bottom bar there the orange one is the baseline temperature of the planet no mission directives the other ones are how much those gases are affecting. Creating perfect systems together in solitude. Okay, Amy. Nice? It would be nice if you could be quiet for a while while I hypothesize. Congratulations. The CO2 trapped in the polar caps has been liberated. Conditions are ripe for stage two. Create an atmosphere by releasing CO2, which we have started. Raise the pressure to 300 millibar and keep up with the plan to terraform Mars. I'm Commander Tyrael. See you next time on Per Aspera.